Well, let me give you my view of what happened January the 6th. And we're all, we're here, we're here. We, we, we saw what happened. It was a violent insurrection for the purpose of trying to prevent the peaceful transfer of power after a legitimately certified election from one administration to the next. That's what it was. That's what it was. Loud, clear, saying it the truth. McConnell also said it is not the job of the RNC to pick and choose which Republicans it supports. Well, compare that, what McConnell said, to the House GOP conference chair, Elise Stefanik, today, who defended the censure resolution and then refused to call out the RNC for using the words legitimate political discourse with this defense. To kill every American. You think that uh, January 6th was legitimate political discourse, which the RNC said over the weekend? Um, as Republicans have been very clear, we condemn the violence on January 6th. We also condemn the violence on 2020 as um, uh, violent criminals attacked federal buildings, uh, including parts of Washington, D.C. So we have been clear in that condemnation. House Democrats did not condemn the violence that happened all of 2020. Out front now, Jamie Gangel, CNN special correspondent, and John Avlon, CNN senior political analyst, and also the author of the new book, Lincoln and the Fight for Peace, which is out one week from today, except for I already have a copy, John. <laughs> and I hope everyone will go get theirs. All right, so John, Senator McConnell calls January 6th what it was, okay? Let's, let's just give the credit for that today, a violent insurrection. But somehow saying this at this point, more than a year later, is hard and controversial, in fact, impossible for many elected Republicans. You know, I, I, I just struggle to understand why, John. It's a choice. I mean, let, let's not, you know, make it any more difficult than it is. These are grown adults, elected re representatives. Mitch McConnell said the truth. This was a violent insurrection that was an attempt to stop a peaceful transfer of power. So the, the, the decision to try to hide behind the whataboutisms or fear of offending the base or former President Trump, as Elise Stefanik said, is some mix of spinelessness and careerism, but it's completely absent of anything resembling reality or principle or facts. And those folks may think it's good short-term politics. It's going to look like hell in the eyes of history. So, so Jamie, you know, our Manu Raju was on Capitol Hill today, of course, as he is every day, talking to people. He talked to the minority leader, Kevin McCarthy, about this, too. And I wanted to play that exchange. The RNC resolution last week referred to the events of January 6th as a legitimate political discourse. I'm wondering what you thought about that's not, that's not correct, but uh, the RNC was talking about, they were talking about, everybody knows anybody who broke in and caused damage. <coughs> that was not called for, and those people, we've said from the very beginning, should be in jail. What they were talking about is the six RNC members who January 6th has subpoenaed, who weren't even here, who were in Florida that day. Okay, um, Jamie, just to be clear, it's interesting that McCarthy went to such a level of detail to say what they were talking about. It's good right. that he did because uh, that's not what it said. The resolution specifically says Representatives Cheney and Kinzinger are participating in a Democratic led persecution of ordinary citizens engaged in legitimate political discourse. Not talking about, you know, six uh, people in, um, you know, right. <laughs> in Florida that day. <laughs> right. um, what, what, what is McCarthy doing here? I mean, did he just make something up? I, I don't know, but here's what I do know. Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger drive Kevin McCarthy crazy, day in and day out. And the fact that he did not make this, uh, put Republicans on the committee who would be acceptable, I think also makes him crazy day in and day out because he does not know what's going on behind the scenes. Kevin McCarthy... Uh, unlike Mitch McConnell, I mean, finally Mitch McConnell, but Kevin McCarthy is still playing to an audience of one, Donald Trump. He wants to be Speaker of the House if the Republicans win in the fall, and everything else falls by the wayside. That is his goal. Sean, you know what's amazing is that legitimate political discourse, um, you know, calling rioters legitimate political discourse is harder to call out, actually, than the censure of Kinzinger and Cheney, which, which actually does surprise me. If I had to choose which thing would be harder to call out, if one could not call out both, I, 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 I would have thought the legitimate political discourse. But there are some Republicans coming to the defense of Cheney and Kinzinger and saying it is a bad idea for the Republican Party to be censuring them. Here are three Republicans. I think for the RNC to weigh in like this is 
is inappropriate and not, frankly, not very constructive either. I think that, that we as a party need to recognize that people are worried about the economy. They're worried about the continuing struggles with COVID. They're looking ahead, and that's what they want us to do. Anything that my party does that uh, comes across as being stupid is not going to help us. So just to be clear, John, Senator Romney, okay, we expect him to be in that group. The other senators, not so much, right? You are seeing people that before didn't say anything that are saying, hey, look, this censure idea is a bad idea. Does, do you see anything in the growing number of Republican senators speaking out here? Is this something or not? I think it's the beginning of seeing the cult start to crack. Um, you're seeing in the wake of Mike Pence on Friday night, calling out Trump finally in clear terms. Um, you've seen, you know, people like Larry Hogan and Chris Christie speaking out even more clearly. Now these senators, not just Mitt Romney um, and, and Bill Cassidy, but senators who've really tried to go out of their way to rationalize Trump and defend him in the past, saying this is too far. And, and, and you know, the old saying, one man with courage makes a majority. Well, six senators start to send forth ripples uh, uh, of hope for maybe some of their colleagues and say, you know what, maybe this isn't, the, maybe telling the truth isn't the end of the world. Maybe it's actually the smart political thing to do. Well, you know, so we, more. And, 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 and let's hope we do. Of course, Jamie, there are Republicans, though, that are open about making crushing Cheney, as, as an example, their number one goal, right, because she is running for re-election. Marjorie Taylor Greene says the most important thing to her, the only thing, is making sure Cheney loses. That's priority number one to me because it's one thing we can play small ball and that's kicking Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger out of our conference, which I want to do, but I really want to, I'm one of those that wants to finish the game and I want the W and that would be defeating Liz Cheney and making sure that she never comes back. Jimmy, what are you hearing? Is Congresswoman Cheney concerned? Is she worried about her, her situation? So let's just talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene for a minute. I don't think Liz Cheney is scared of anyone, and I certainly don't think Marjorie Taylor Greene. Cheney has said all along that this is about democracy, the Constitution, rule of law, politics. She knows she has a tough battle in Wyoming. Wyoming is the Trumpiest state there is. More people voted for Trump than for Liz Cheney. Not a lot, but, but more. I think that Liz Cheney has made it clear she's put this on the line. Every day she doubles down. Uh, whether she wins or not, she's not going away. And she sees this as more important than any political fight. Yeah, it's a pretty significant to say sometimes. Right. Uh, whether you win or, lot, uh, win or not, you are not going away. Thank you both right. very much.